Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build sequences for things like bass, leads, and chords in the step sequencer by working with tonal instruments. So by tonal instruments, I mean pitched instruments. So basically anything except for drums. If you wanna learn about using the step sequencer for making beats and drum patterns, go check out my previous video on how to do that. Okay, so to start, I do have a drum beat I've built here in the step sequencer, it just sounds like this. So it's just a very simple eighth note drum idea. I'm gonna go ahead and just loop this by pressing Command U. And let's start by adding a bass to this. So I'm just going to choose a bass instrument from the library. I'm gonna to go to synthesizer, bass. So I'm going to go with this Outen Road intersection bass. It sounds like this. And then I just need to create a new pattern region. So I'll just right click or control click out in the tracks area and create a new pattern region. Now by default, Logic will create one octave in the key that you have set up here. So most of the time, if you just leave this on C major, this will just create one octaves in C major, but it does behave a little weird sometimes. Sometimes I notice that it uses C even though I change the key. Other times I change the key up here and it changes the key in the step sequencer, but there's actually two different ways you can sort of get around this. The first is you can just change the key of the step sequencer over here before you start entering notes. So if I click here, I can set this to A, and then I can set this to natural minor if I want A minor, or if I wanted A major, I could switch this over to A major, and you'll see some of the notes change to sharp notes to denote A major. So when working with melodic or pitched instruments in the step sequencer, instead of each row being a kit piece, each row is a different note. So let's just switch this back to a natural minor. And I could start building a bass line now, but I think A2 is gonna be a little high for a bass line. Yeah, I want this to be in a lower octave. But before I show you how to transpose the octave, let me show you another way to load up a step sequencer template so that you can have more notes. Like maybe I want more than just one octave of notes. I wanna show you a workaround for that. Click the Patterns button here, and then go to Templates. And there's a whole bunch of different templates for different scales. I'm gonna choose the Minor template. And what you'll see is this creates two octaves in the key that we've selected up here, or the key that you've selected over here. So I could set this over to A major or A minor again, and that will give me two full octaves. Now I don't really need all of these notes for bass, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete some of these rows. You can delete rows by right-clicking or control-clicking and selecting Delete Row, or you can use the shortcut Command-Delete. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to delete all of these up until the A3 octave. So I have one octave of notes in A minor again. Now to transpose this down to the first octave rather than the second octave, I'm going to press Shift-Option-Down, and this will transpose the entire step sequencer, all of the rows, down by one octave, and you can go up by octaves too. So shift option up or down will transpose the step sequencer in octaves, just like it does for notes in the piano roll editor. Likewise, if you hold option and press up or down, this will transpose the entire step sequencer in semitones. So if I wanted to go from A minor to B flat or A sharp minor, I could do that, or maybe I wanna go up to C minor or D sharp minor. So you can transpose this to any key you like. Okay, so just like before, each step by default is a 16th note. I'm actually gonna switch this over to eighth notes because I want this to be a bit slower. Now, one thing I wanna show you here is another edit mode that allows you to extend the length of a step. Some of these notes, I really want them to be like two steps in length. 
So what I'm going to do is go up here to the edit modes and I'm going to show you the tie edit mode. So what the tie edit mode does is it allows you to click on a step to extend that step forward to be two steps in length. And you can do this with two or more steps and you can just click again to remove the tie. So here I'm going to click on this and this. There we go. Let's turn a step back on He Actually, let's go ahead and just break up that tie. There we go. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, now let's say that I want to take this pattern and I want to develop it a bit further. I want something maybe on a different chord or a different uh, root note or bottom note here. What I'll do is I'll switch this from 16 steps over to 32. And now I have a 32 step sequence and I can throw in another note here. Now, basically I want to keep all of these top notes the same, but I just want to shift all of these notes down so what I'm actually gonna do is create a new row and I'm going to add another note to the step sequencer. The note I want to add is F, but it's not F2, I wanna add F1, that's below this A1. So what I'm gonna do is just click up here, then go to notes and then select F and then I can select F1 and what this will do is it'll add another row for F1. Now what I can do is I can either enter in these notes manually or I can right click on my A1 row and select copy row or press control C, then right click on the F1 row and paste in those notes, and then just simply delete the ones that I don't want from each row, just like that. Now there's another edit mode up here called octave, and what this does is it allows you to adjust the octave of any of the steps. So let's say these last two notes, I want to drop them down an octave. You can just click and drag down. and This will lower the octave on those notes. Now, technically speaking, this note down an octave is just the same note as down here. So I think I'm just going to delete that, add a note here, and then I'll just tie this. And maybe I'll do something different with the note right before it just to give it a bit more flavor. Yeah, much better. One thing I do want to point out here, though, is when you change the pitch of a note on a row to make it different than the default pitch of a row, this becomes a melodic row where you can actually change the pitch of any note on that row. Now, this is a bit more of an advanced thing to work with, so we'll save this for later on in the series. But I think I've created a perfectly acceptable bass line here that fits this beat. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to my chords. Okay, so for the chords, let's find a nice synth pad type instrument or synth string type instrument. So here's a library preset called Analog Waves. And once again, I'm just going to right click or control click, create a new pattern region. And this time I'm really going to need to use that template because I need more than just one octave of notes here. I'm not going to use all of them, but I, I do need more than just one octave. So I'm going to go into the templates and I will select the natural minor template right here. So now I have two octaves of notes. And one of the things I love about working with chords in the step sequencer is that it just sort of visualizes the triads like really easily. So for example, if I want to start off with an A minor triad, I have A, C, and E. If I wanted a B diminished triad, now I have B, D, F. And you can just sort of repeat these intervals of creating a note, skipping a note, creating a note, skipping a note, and creating another note. 
So it just makes it really easy to create triads or even seventh chords. You can just add another note and you just follow that same pattern to create any diatonic triads or seventh chords. Another function I wanna show you up under functions is you can clear all row values without clearing the entire pattern. You can just go down to step on off. So this keeps the pattern settings, but just clears the notes. Okay, so let's start off with an A minor triad. And then I'm gonna go down to an F major triad. Let's go ahead and add a seventh to that. Now, if I play this right now, these are both 16th notes. They're not really going to do what I want them to do. That's too quick. I want these to be long, like whole note chords. So in order to do that, you click here and you change the step rate to one. So now each step in the sequence is actually a whole note. So off screen, I'll build out my chord progression. Now the cool thing about the step sequencer is even though there are 16 steps here, as long as the region is not 16 steps long, this will loop only the region that you've trimmed up here in the tracks area. So I don't have to worry about this being 16 steps long because it's only going to play four steps because I only have four bars of content up here in the tracks area. And it's great for just building chord progressions on the fly during playback and hearing what notes sort of fit together and what notes don't fit well together. So let's hear what this sounds like now with the beat and bass in. Okay, so I feel like maybe my chords need to be two bars long instead of one bar long. So instead of one, I'll switch this to two. And now each of the chords will be two bars in length. I just have to make sure I trim out that region and I'll just duplicate the bass here as well. Now, one last thing I wanna show you that actually has more to do with rhythm than it has to do with the pitched instruments is I wanna show you how to swing your patterns to give it a different feel. So what I'm gonna do is open up my analog drive uh, drum instrument here, and I'm gonna click on this I button here. This will open up the local inspector within the step sequencer, and you'll see there's an option here for swing, and you can set this to eighth note or 16th note swing. So since this is an eighth note pattern, I'm going to go with an eighth note swing. Now, 50% swing means there's essentially no swing. But if you set this to 66% swing, that's like a triplet swing. So if you want like a heavier swing, a more intentional swing, you can set this to 66 or higher. And if you want this to be a more gentle swing, you can set this to 65 or lower. So I'm going to go with like 64 for this. And I'll do the same thing for my bass instrument down here. So I'll just open up this pattern region, put on eighth note swing, set the amount of swing to 64, and then I just need to delete these two, and then drag over these and hit Command R to copy them over, to copy over that swing. And there you go. That's how you can work with tonal pitched instruments in the Step Sequencer in Logic Pro. Now, if you want to follow along or you want to have this project to play around with and get familiarized with the Step Sequencer, I will save this and offer it as a free download in the video description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.